When someone wants to get involved with our work, we take a realistic approach. Our formal interviews are followed by a three-month practical interview period. During this time, we expect two clear indicators of intention to be thought about and met. Too many people are under the impression that change will still happen if they conveniently dodge what they don't want to look at or deal with. Well, it won't. You have to be serious, turning kindliness into appropriate action, getting straight down to business. The first of our indicators of intention apply for any interviewee as a smoker. That included myself way back when I first got involved. Decades of medical research prove beyond doubt that cigarettes seriously damage your health and will likely kill you, prematurely. If you're happy to mess up your health in this way, then you're not what we call a good potential role model. We stand for bringing about beneficial change, not lung cancer, damage to your heart and blood circulation, respiratory diseases and death. So, if you smoke, we ask you to quit, understanding why. Our request is logical and practical. We also ask that a prospective team member becomes vegetarian, which is our second indicator of intention, again demonstrating increased understanding and the application of this awareness. Some interviewees already are vegetarian, whereas others are not. Being a vegetarian isn't a big deal, but it does crucially indicate intention. We're always saying that one thoughtful and capable meat eater might be doing more for the world than 10 mediocre vegetarians combined. A statement that has pissed off quite a lot of campaigning vegans, plus a few vegetarians over the years. But it's nevertheless true, looking at the bigger picture. What you eat is just one aspect of living an ethical and worthy life. As a starting point, let's be absolutely clear that a vegetarian diet is as healthy as any other, possibly healthier. All you're doing by becoming a vegetarian is cutting out meat, poultry and fish from your diet, plus any byproducts such as fish oil or animal rennet. This leaves most food items to choose from, a huge variety. Cereals, bread, rice, pasta, lentils, beans, vegetables, fruit, nuts, cheese, milk, yoghurt, eggs, biscuits, chocolate and much more are available to eat. Being vegetarian is also cheaper. Carry on shopping in supermarkets as before, which already cater for millions of vegetarians. Delicious meals include lasagna, vegetable casserole, spicy bean burgers, egg and chips, pizza, cauliflower cheese, stir-fries, a range of curries, soups and stews, nut roast, a Christmas special, or simpler snacks such as the ever-healthy classic of baked beans on toast. Our reasoning for becoming vegetarian is simple. You eat meat, fish and fowl for two basic reasons. First, it's what most people do, copying the behaviour of others and fitting in. Second, you like the taste. But, and it's a significant but, this involves the killing of animals. You might not do it yourself, but they're bred and killed on your behalf. You're the consumer. Carrots and lettuces don't have brains or nervous systems. Animals are sentient beings. They feel pain. Switching to a vegetarian diet is possibly the easiest lifestyle change you can make which will bring about benefits. It's a straightforward commercial matter of supply and demand. You're taking yourself out of the market, which therefore slightly declines. In our experience, traditional family farmers are a good bunch. Contrary to what many vegan or vegetarian campaigners want you to believe, the vast majority of livestock farmers care for the welfare of their animals. Yes, exceptions do happen, but rarely. Most cruelty happens during the transportation process and at the abattoir. That said, factory farming can be extremely questionable, not least the rearing of broiler chickens in crowded sheds. We've looked a lot at the social conditioning of monkey do what monkey see, which masks a lack of clear thinking skills, and eating habits are likewise affected. You'd probably not choose to eat a dog, yet you might happily eat a pig. 
Yet dogs and pigs have a similar level of intelligence. In South Korea, eating dogs isn't unusual. In England, eating cows is commonplace. However, in India, it's unacceptable because the cow is seen as a sacred animal. What might be one person's dinner is another's pet dog or holy cow. Fish are one of the last wild animals to be extensively hunted across the world. Each year, millions of tons of fish are hauled out of the seas. It's not only the fish that suffer. Nets also catch dolphins, porpoises, small whales, sharks, diving seabirds, shellfish, crabs, starfish and many other creatures, as well as species of fish which are unwanted. Seals are commonly shot by fishermen, seen as competitors. Being vegetarian also makes sense on environmental grounds. It's grossly inefficient to use land for growing crops and then to feed these to animals just for meat production. Cows and sheep waste approximately 90% of the plant material needed to feed them because they use up large amounts of energy through growing, moving about, reproduction, etc. A staggering 25% of our planet's land surface is used for the grazing of domestic livestock. At the same time, human overpopulation has restricted much of our wildlife to national parks and other nature reserves. A lot less land is needed for growing food when people choose to be vegetarian. Land currently used for meat production could instead be set aside as more space for wildlife, a way of giving back. Of course, any significant reduction in meat eating will help in this way. We suggest that benefits to the environment are seen as a bonus with the ethical argument for combating cruelty being persuasive and coherent in itself. Don't get caught up in the organic arguments, which are mainly a load of crap, often involving misuse of the word natural to con people who can't think clearly. The case for being a vegan isn't much better. Facts are exaggerated to the point of outright distortion. Their arguments barely differ from the vegetarian perspective, yet they claim some imagined higher moral ground. A couple of points they make about dairy products are easily answered by alternative solutions. There'll be a link in the description below for anyone who wants additional details about these issues, so we're just touching on them here. Humans are the beast that kills for kicks. Pleasure. Trophy hunting and bullfighting are two obvious examples. But the eating of meat is effectively no different. You do it because you want to do it. It isn't at all necessary, as millions of vegetarians like myself adequately demonstrate. Many happily eat meat because they avoid thinking about what's involved. There's undeniable cruelty and animals are killed for human pleasure. That's the blunt reality, the bottom line. Future human civilizations won't eat meat, fowl or fish. They'll think more and care more. Contradictions and hypocrisy will be replaced by integrity. Therefore, what they'll do and won't do is pretty obvious, if you can be bothered to think about it. And when does the future start? You've got it. Now. OK, that's enough food for thought. Next up is the last film of the series. I'll see you again soon.